Maximum Conviction is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world the only thing holding him back from being a major action star is talent, work ethic, intelligence, ability, self-awareness, attractiveness, basic human decency, you know what, everything, literally everything. Right? Yeah. It starts off with Seagal working at a military prison, which you can tell by the fact that he's wearing whatever the f he wants. He got word that a giant egg-shaped man was randomly attacking innocent people, which is his role, motherfucker. Now that he's top egg, he decides to shut the prison down with the help of Steve Austin. I still can't believe I let you convince me to come here to shut down a couple of bullshit buildings. But we've seen his movies. I'm sure they just called and asked. Last time was a real clusterfuck, wasn't it? No idea which movie he's talking about, but yes. Anyways, mission accomplished. This bitch is fully decommissioned. Except for the whole still being full of prisoners thing. You booked in two more high security assets right after you and Manning permanently shut it down. You must be new to Seagal movies, but just understand it's in your best interest to pretend you never saw that. I kill you just like I killed them. Since this never happened, all that's left is a garbage pickup, so they make a deal. Austin will fix the trash compactor while Seagal drinks and flirts with young hotties. These ladies have been waiting for you all day. Then, in what could only happen in a Seagal movie, the bad guy's plans to attack the prison are discovered when they write it out on a piece of paper and somehow miss their fucking pocket. And yes, that happened inside the prison they're attacking. Meanwhile, Austin just realized he has no fucking idea how trash compactors work when the feds show up asking about Seagal's secret prisoners slash victims. Samantha Mendez and Charlotte Walker. Oh shit, he knew this day was gonna come, so he notifies Seagal, who hauls ass out there. All right, look, man, nobody moves. Wait till I get there. But the feds don't play, and know if you want to catch a Seagal, you have to become a Seagal. Where the f are they? At the same time, the attack on the prison kicks off, but is foiled f you. by everyone's complete and utter stupidity. I know he threw his drink at you, but he's also the only one that knows the password, you fucking idiot. But on the upside, Austin finally figures out what's wrong with the trash compactor. It was full of mercenaries and explosives, and son of a bitch, it's always the last thing you check. So while this guy tries going through every possible 10 digit combination, and this guy's aiming at the fucking ceiling, Stone Cold can't believe these idiots outsmarted him. So he gets some payback by poking a couple of them with a screwdriver, and then running away. Now sh gets real when Seagal, who definitely only has one chin, shows up. But son of a bitch, he left the hatch open and a much thinner man jacked his luggage. So he's gonna have to do things the old fashioned way and takes the guard out with the trusty double slap. Then it's just a couple bare paw slaps on his partner. And now he's in. This guy means business. Also, Seagal's boys show up for reasons the movie tries to explain. Who the hell are those guys? The HSO team, I think they called it. But gives up halfway through. Why were they waiting for a high-speed operating team? So now the teams are closing in on each other in what's sure to be a battle with heavy casualties on both sides, which is the perfect time for Stone Cold to show everyone how funny he is. Boo. Fucking got him. God damn it, it's every time I do it. So he calls them pussies for not shooting him. I need to wake up. And they head out. Now we meet back up with the sensei himself, and I'm pretty sure that's the bathroom, so we'll give him just a minute. Okay, now we meet back up with the sensei himself, who just realized he's been holding the gun the wrong way this entire time. And I swear to God, this prison's a 
fucking maze because I'm pretty sure he already came through here. And son of a bitch, the rifle's in the wrong hand again. These things are so tricky. But luckily, this time, there are people here who are used to these rescue attempts and know the drill. What's going on? He tells them, same old shit and they can't risk the hostages talking. So we want to kill them first, you hear? So they agree to be human shields. If somebody comes, I'll lay down by you time. While he eliminates the hostages. Then he starts to think maybe he can salvage this and makes them a deal. Hey, listen to me. Do what I say. I'll kill you before they kill you. We cool? They say no, which he takes as yes, and they make their move which he starts to regret when she interrupts his sitting break to start telling her life story I'm a courier that nobody gives a shit about. Contact on my last drop was a CIA op. He's been CIA a bunch of times. Now please shut the fuck up. Because this movie is only stupid and not insulting yet, Seagal cranks it up a notch by ripping off Johnny Mnemonic. They upload the information onto an implant. But instead of a chip in her brain... Where's the implant? Because it's Seagal, it's in her boob. <laughs> Anyways, they try to negotiate with Seagal... We know you got some women back there. ...and ask for him to please let the hostages go unharmed. Just give us one. But Seagal turns the tables with the sickest burn of all time. Why don't you fuck your mama when you pet poodles? Before lighting them the fuck up, which was unnecessary because they were already dead. Why don't you fuck your mama when you pet poodles? And because women just can't get along, they choose now out of all times to start fighting. When not even Seagal can believe some shit is happening, you know a movie has gone off the rails. But there's no time for that because a prisoner's escaped and tries to shank Seagal, but he's powerless against the master and his oh my god stop it technique. Then, after unloading on nobody in particular, another escape prisoner shows up and somehow they both forget Seagal has two fucking guns and the prisoner gets humiliated when Rock'em Sock'em Seagal takes him out with what is by far the highest kick of his career. Now one of the hostages has taken the other hostage hostage with the highly technical move of pulling her hair. She ends up almost getting foiled by Stone Cold who doesn't have hair but instead beats the living shit out of him. Then they run into Les Black Seagal who tries doing Seagal things. But holy shit. Hey, fuckhead over here! Why is she not the star of this movie? She beats the holy hell out of Seagal 2 using his own double slap move along with science. And a spin kick. Because those are fucking awesome. Which inspires Stone Cold to brush himself off and take guys out with dubious science himself. which would make a lot more sense <laughs> if he didn't have a gun, which he clearly does. Anyways, if you forgot these guys were in the movie, don't worry, so did they. Seagal makes it to the control room with the help of a really poor green screen and they try to lure him out, but this soldier sacrifices himself and whoever this lady is. It's a Which I'm pretty sure he guessed, since he could see the gun to your head. But whatever, he wasn't coming anyways. Now Stone Cold has his dramatic showdown with this guy, who I guess is bald too, and certainly appears to be a match for Stone Cold, who just barely sneaks out with the win. Meanwhile, this guy succeeds and rescues the hostages, but finds being Seagal isn't something you can just turn off. Kill the bitch, let's bounce. But Seagal gave them his word. I'll kill you before they kill you. And distracts everyone by holding his shotgun like a 
fucking idiot. While everyone's laughing at him, he backward waddles away, then decides he wants to rip off the rock now. Every weapon now! Drop it, drop your weapon! Put them down now! Put them down! You motherfucking drop it! But then Seagal expertly falls while still managing to fire while his gun bounces around with pinpoint accuracy. Now there's a massive gunfight, so he whispers to cover him, I cover me. which I'm sure they'll get right on. And for fuck's sake, could you guys give it a rest? But deep down, we all know they can't. Okay, great. Anyways, what's his name? Runs out of ammo. Uh, and everyone else must have some sh to take care of or something. So he has to go around and take out all the enemies bare fucking handed. Which he does. <laughs> Except for this one guy. Now that he looks like a jackass in front of Stone Cold again, Spider-Man and dipshit decide to show back up. Fuck you guys. Seagal confronts other Seagal, and it turns out that one lady's boob is worth a shitload of money. $200 million. Which he plans to donate to an orphanage in Mexico. Which really brightens Seagal's mood, and for the first time, just kidding, double chop! Followed by an Irish dance kick. Then he desperately tries to reason with Seagal. You know the story about the scorpion and the frog? Fuck you! Just then, she shows up to take out Seagal. But the second she lays eyes on those Bono glasses and backwards baseball cap, her knees get weak and she turns to putty. Since they're banging now and those titties belong to Seagal, $200 million. Fuck that orphanage. I hope you like to fly, baby. It's time to go. 